Sunday, the AFL's biggest rivalry. The Orlando Predators. The AFL's men in black. The Tampa Bay Storm. Six-time AFL champs led by the league's winningest coach. Think this Gruden's intense. His brother Jay suits up as QB for Orlando as they host the tough team from Tampa. For regional action, the AFL on NBC. Next Sunday, 3 Eastern. NBC. Drama at its Sunday best. With an all-new Law & Order criminal intent, it can make women beautiful, but did it kill? It was derived from something for germ warfare. It's an ending that'll get under your skin. Then, the most anticipated television event, the premiere of Kingpin. My family's here! Time Magazine says it has attitude and edge. Yeah! And we're boozle! Newsweek calls it excellent. We had to do it. American Dreams, Law & Order criminal intent, and the premiere of Kingpin, NBC Tonight. Straight ahead on News 10, NASA engineers are busy gathering and piecing together debris from Columbia. We'll have the latest on the investigation. Will the tragedy keep a local astronaut from making his scheduled journey into space? And a an NASA scientist talks about how the Columbia disaster will affect RIT. Attention, Rochester Furniture Shoppers. It's been years in the planning, and it's finally here. The grand opening of Raymore and Flanagan Furniture's massive Henrietta Superstore. To celebrate, absolutely everything's on sale at all five Rochester area locations. Now every piece of furniture has been reduced at all five Raymore and Flanagan Rochester area showrooms. With no deposit, interest, or payments for one full year. Plus delivery in three days or less. Everything's on sale now during Raymore and Flanagan Furniture's grand opening in Henrietta. Going on now. Mothers should know that smoking around their children is dangerous. Jenny smokes every day. She doesn't realize how harmful its effects are. She doesn't know that cigarette smoke can cause infants to develop asthma or even die. Even if she did know, there's nothing Jenny could do to stop smoking because she's only six months old. Jenny smokes because her mother smokes. Don't smoke around your children. If you know someone who does, let them know how you feel about secondhand smoke. And now for something completely different. I'm going to pet my tiger. You've never seen anything like this on network television. I have seen the flames the hell. Think of it as a good time, you know, beating up the white man. You want it to be king. You think I'm weak, but to rule an empire. I think you've got some issues. He must first rule a family. I say, oh, I got to be me! From the director of The Sopranos. Don't trust anybody. Jake Pitt premieres NBC tonight. You're watching 10 NBC Rochester. It has been a solemn day in Rochester and across the world as we remember seven heroes. It's our top story. Investigators are finding more debris and we are learning more about what may have caused the shuttle to explode. We'll have up to the minute details. RIT professors do a lot of research for NASA. I'm Elizabeth Chernak. I'll tell you about that research and how it will be impacted by the latest shuttle tragedy. A mild and gray Sunday. Will the warm-up continue this week? Josh has the forecast from the 10 NBC Weather Lab. The 6 o'clock news starts now. Digging for answers. Reporting them first. This is News 10 NBC at 6. Good evening. I'm Kristen Salome. Wendy has the night off. Investigators are trying to piece together the last moments on board the space shuttle Columbia. Many are already calling the crew of seven heroes. They will be remembered for their bravery. One of the biggest debris fields in the country is Nagadoches County, Texas. People are spotting metal, pieces of machinery, and even human remains. Officials are flying over the area in helicopters and then directing search parties to those spots. But the wreckage won't move until federal officials decide what to do with it. The Nacogdoches County Sheriff says there are already more than a thousand debris sites and that number may double before the search is over. As for the investigation into the crash, NASA says the space shuttle temperature began breaking up and rising before the breakup. Earlier today I spoke with a man who is from Rochester but now lives in Nacogdoches, Texas, very close to this tragedy. Jim Hogel told me he heard the shuttle before he knew what it was or what had happened. It sounded like a train was, was coming uh, right through our front yard about five feet from the house because the whole house just shook and I didn't know what it was. First, my first instinct was like a falling limb or something off all the pine trees we have around here, but I knew it couldn't have been that because, I mean, the whole 
the foundation of the house, which the, the earth was shaking, eight, nine seconds. Local astronaut Pam Melroy of Pittsford is back in Houston tonight after yesterday's shuttle disaster. We spoke by phone with her father today. He says Pam had been at Cape Canaveral for the return of Columbia. She was among those who escorted the families of the victims back to NASA headquarters. Astronaut Ed Liu, a graduate of Webster Thomas High School, made his first shuttle flight about two years ago. Brett Davidson spoke with his parents today and joins us live now from our newsroom. Brett, the Lou's must be going through some mixed emotions. Uh, on the one hand, uh, relief that their son wasn't on board. On the other hand, what a tragedy. Yeah, absolutely, Kristen. Uh, very much so. There is sorrow, but as you said, also relief. Ed Liu was scheduled to return to space and the International Space Station next month on the very next shuttle flight. But Ed Liu's parents tell me they are always aware of the dangers behind the job. Yesterday's Columbia disaster, a very real reminder of that. Ed Liu first went into space aboard Atlantis in September of 2000. His 11-day mission went off without a hitch, and it included a spacewalk. His parents say from the time he was a kid living in Webster, he had a love of flying and exploring. He was in Cape Canaveral yesterday to greet the Columbia crew. His parents say he was very close to three of the astronauts who died yesterday. They were all in his graduating class at the space program. His mother says she's always concerned any time the shuttle is in space, but also says she believes in NASA. We parents are always a little nervous, but we know that everything's meant possible to be taken care of, be always taken care of. We have confidence. Now, Elmira native Eileen Collins, whose father lives here in Rochester, was scheduled to command next, flight, uh, next month's Atlantis flight that would have been carrying Ed Liu to the International Space Station. But NASA is not ready to say tonight when it might resume the shuttle program. Coming up, we're going to hear much more from the Liu family tonight at 11. Reporting live in the newsroom, Brett Davidson, News 10 NBC. Congresswoman Louise Slaughter says Congress will want answers before another space shuttle launch takes place. We caught up with Slaughter today in Rochester. I think there are going to be some serious questions asked in Congress. Um, the space shuttle is very old. Uh, they had abandoned plans to build a new one because of budgetary cutbacks. And um, there are people who believe, and I heard this yesterday at a conference that I was attending when we heard about it, uh, that, that corners had been cut. In fact, the Congressional Committee had been told that. The faith community across the country and here in Rochester turned to places of worship today to try to understand the tragedy of Columbia. We caught up with one service at the Asbury First Methodist Church on East Avenue where worshipers came to pay their respects to the seven astronauts who lost their lives. Now bringing you Western New York's most advanced forecasting technology, here's meteorologist Josh Nichols in the 10NBC Weather Lab. And good evening, everyone. Something of a drab and dull day across Rochester and Western New York. Occasionally, we saw the renegade flurry or two passing through the skies, wind blown a little bit as well. And uh, some of that snow is actually courtesy of a coastal storm just off the New England shoreline. 35 degrees is our temperature right now, so at least we've maintained temperatures just above the freezing level a little bit. I would be not doing my job if I didn't tell you what happened today with the groundhog. So let's go into the forecast center and share that answer with you. Phil says six more weeks. He saw his shadow and I think we can concur here in the 10 NBC Weather Lab that we will be stuck in winter for the next six more weeks. Of course, General Beauregard Lee down in Georgia, he didn't see his shadow, so they're probably going to get an early spring, right? But that's Georgia anyway. But we have a mini thaw of our own coming up for Monday and for Tuesday, and that is going to be courtesy of a big old storm going through the St. Lawrence Valley. It's going to produce a high wind event. Then we're back into the deep freeze for Wednesday, and that means more lake snows and more sub-zero wind chills. Here we go again. The pattern is redeveloping all over again. Big blocking high in the North Atlantic and other blocking high in the Pacific, big polar vortex developing in central Canada, sending down surges of Arctic air through the middle part of the week. It's just like what we went through through much of January. There are your weather facts for today. The high temperature 35, the low 33. Just a trace of precipitation and a scant trace of snowfall today and some of those flurries courtesy of that coastal storm. Right now at Rochester Airport, we stand at 35 degrees, still gray, still overcast. The breeze west-northwesterly at about 12 miles per hour. And as we take a look at our weather watcher numbers, we see temperature Temperatures mainly in the low 30s, 34 for instance in Red Creek, 32 right now from our newest weather watcher in Ocean, and it's 34 currently in Leroy. We inspect northeast temperatures and you can see 41 in New York, 49 in Washington, 
much colder up in Bangor. They're dealing with a blizzard out here as this coastal storm continues to intensify, going through a process called bombogenesis. That's explosive development. But we're also tracking a little bit of precipitation here off to the west in the Great Lakes. It's a mixture of precipitation. And you can clearly see via our temperature graph that there is a lot going on when there's a north-south temperature gradient that's in this intense from Minneapolis to Dallas. That suggests storminess. And you can see that developing right here in the middle portion of the country. It's this storm that's going to be taking a track to our west, and that means we're going to get a lot of rain out of it instead of snow. Not a whole lot, but much of it is going to be in the form of liquid. So the weather map for Monday shows the clouds thickening up. We'll get some wet snow developing late in the afternoon into the evening. And as the warm front gets closer and closer, we'll go from a mix to some rain, and then some colder air will come in on the storm's backside, and that's when things really chill down as we go to Wednesday. But in the meantime, for tonight, the flurries fade. We get breaking clouds, a little bit of patchy fog in the valleys, low 24 to 28 tomorrow. Kind of a gray day with a chilly breeze, some wet snow or a light wintry mix later in the afternoon, the high 34 to 38, a windy event coming up for uh, Tuesday. Could see gusts over 50 miles per hour Tuesday night, and then the bitter chill comes in, Kristen, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with lake snows, sub-zero wind chills all over again. Here we go. Back to winter. You got it. Well, kind of gray today, matching the mood of the country, I'm afraid. Very true. All right. Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. Well, the effects of the space shuttle disaster will continue to be felt here in Rochester. Coming up, find out how programs at a local college could be impacted. I'm Murray Fitzpatrick from the Rochester Hammer. The one you love is back. The Monterey Ranch Chicken Sandwich at Wendy's. Wendy's, it's better here. I'm News 10 NBC's Elizabeth Chernak. Once again, you and 10 NBC partnered together to support the efforts of local schools to sell a record number of entertainment books. Congratulations, Rochester, for raising over $1 million. Helped raise funds for many school projects, including computers for Indian Landing School, playground equipment at Honeyoy Elementary, and a cultural arts program at Harris Hill Elementary. We thank Simply Certificates and Seneca Park Zoo for supporting entertainment books. The Rochester Athletic Club. You are active. R -A -C -N -U. You have fun. If you work out, you want results. I'll make sure you get them. Using principles like target heart rate, overload, and cross training, you'll lose inches and look your best. My goal? Reaching your goal. Enroll now. Get three months for $99. You can do it. R -A -C -N -U. Five minutes, guys. The C240 sedan now with formatic all-wheel drive. Disappointing kids everywhere. And now for something completely different. I'm going to pet my tiger. You've never seen anything like this on network television. I have seen the flames of hell. Think of it as a good time, you know, beating up the white man. <laughs> I think I'm weak, but to rule an empire. I think you've got some issues. You must first rule your family. I said, oh, I got to be me! From the director of The Sopranos. Don't trust anybody. Jamie Penn premieres NBC tonight. Flags all around the Rochester area were at half staff today. This one in front of the Rochester Public Safety Building is symbolic of a nation mourning the loss of seven heroic astronauts. Rochester Institute of Technology and NASA have strong ties. NASA provides professors and students with several research grants, which in turn helps out NASA. But since NASA's priority is now to investigate the shuttle disaster, RIT may feel some repercussions. Elizabeth Schrenak looked into this story. Elizabeth, what type of research does RIT do for NASA, and how could it be impacted by this tragedy? Well, Kristen, since NASA will likely spend a lot of time and money on an investigation about what exactly happened to the shuttle Columbia, some future research grants may be delayed. Funding for projects going on right now has already been secured, so those projects should continue as planned. Ryan Raffelli is a physics professor at RIT. With a grant from NASA, he's making materials to use for power systems like batteries and solar panels. He says the partnership between RIT and NASA is key for developing new technologies. You never really know how good they're going to be until we get them up and 
up in space and test them, you know, under the real conditions. He gives credit to astronauts. These are the people that actually put their lives on the lines to develop science for the rest of us. The crew of the Columbia conducted 80 science experiments while in orbit. Some of the data was transmitted back to Earth, but not all. Things that the, the astronauts learned while they were up there will be uh, unfortunately uh, lost. Since NASA now has to investigate what happened, funding for future research projects at RIT could be delayed. When things go bad for NASA, there is a trickle down to the kind of people who work with NASA, such as uh, ourselves in the lab. From his experience working for NASA, Raffelli knows precautions were taken to prevent an accident. Columbia out of communications at present uh, with Mission Control. Raffelli says NASA scientists have extensive training in failure analysis to predict any problems before they happen. He is confident that NASA would not put a shuttle up into orbit if there were any doubts. They're not shy about scrubbing a mission, even if there is a hint or a any potential whatsoever that there could be a problem. But since a problem on the shuttle Columbia wasn't detected before liftoff, NASA now has to invest in making sure it won't happen again. And Raffelli is actually heading to NASA's Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio tomorrow. He expects it to be a sad day, but he says work will go on as it would be disrespectful to quit since seven astronauts just lost their lives to science. Elizabeth Chernak, News 10 NBC. Some local reservists are getting ready to ship out. We check in on the busy sailors just ahead. Stay with us. Hi. I got you something special. Does it come in a box? Uh-huh. Is it round? Yeah. Is it gold? Uh-huh. Is it a gold ring? Close your eyes. New stuffed crust gold pizza from Pizza Hut. We married a ring of cheese baked inside the crust with golden cheddar on top for a toasted crunch. Stuffed crust pizza for $9.99 or go for the gold for $1 more. New at Pizza Hut. Can I open my eyes yet? No, not yet. Hi, I'm Keith Hernandez. And I'm Walt Clyde Frazier. What a marvelous night for the action. Let's go to the play-by-play. -play. Oh, there's Mr. Graybeard approaching Miss Hottie. Oh, no. Rejected. Clyde, that's got to hurt. Yeah, no play for Mr. Gray. Get that man our just a man brush in color gel. It's specially formulated to penetrate coarse facial hair and gets rid of gray in five easy minutes. Gets rid of strikeouts, too. <laughs> just for me and gel. The Rejuvenator. You can hear News 10 NBC on the radio every day on WYSL News 1040. These broadcasts are made possible by Genesee Ford Truck. If you break it, Faluca will fix it. For three generations, Faluca has installed garage doors that add value and save on energy costs. Their LiftMaster garage door openers will make your home safer and more secure. And now, a 100% labor and parts no headaches guarantee is available. For the best backed, best installed garage doors in Rochester, call Faluca Garage Doors. Your estimate is free. Attention, Rochester furniture shoppers. It's been years in the planning, and it's finally here. The grand opening of Raymore and Flanagan Furniture's massive Henrietta Superstore. To celebrate, absolutely everything's on sale at all five Rochester area locations. Now every piece of furniture has been reduced at all five Raymore and Flanagan Rochester area showrooms. With no deposit, interest, or payments for one full year. Plus delivery in three days or less. Everything's on sale now during Raymore and Flanagan Furniture's grand opening in Henrietta. Going on now digging for answers reporting them first this is news 10 nbc at six with wendy wright mark grubaugh sports and meteorologist josh nichols in the news 10 nbc weather lab Rochester police have two men in custody in connection with the city's latest homicide. 20-year-old Terrence Washington and 24-year-old Jesse Cooper are charged with second-degree murder. Police say they shot and killed 20-year-old Kevin Hillard on Friday near the intersection of St. Paul and Avenue D. Police also say the two suspects pulled up next to Hillard in their SUV, argued with the victim, and moments later shot him. Another local reserve unit is mobilizing for duty. 16 sailors with the Navy's construction battalion will fly to Gulfport, Mississippi later this week. Today was a busy day at the unit's Chai Lai headquarters as the sailors get their paperwork in order. The group could be gone for one to two years. They don't know exactly where their ultimate destination is. They won't know until they arrive in Mississippi. 
there's a lot of stirring around. I, I think he caught some of our folks off, off guard, although they knew that they should be ready every day. Uh, this happened pretty quickly, and uh, most of them are really looking forward to the challenge. During the Gulf War, the Navy's mobile construction battalion built camps for troops in Saudi Arabia. Well, city snowplows are getting some help from tow trucks and city police. Crews were out earlier today ticketing and removing cars blocking snowplow routes. City codes require that cars be moved at least every 12 hours. If you don't move your car, you could get a ticket of $35 or have to pay more than $100 a day for towing and storage fees. Mark Gruba is just ahead with sports. The best players in the NHL faced off against each other this afternoon. We'll have all-star game highlights when we return. It's time to start up in a new Ford Explorer. With red carpet option financing for just $325 a month for 36 months with $3033 due. So why not start the year in the world's best-selling SUV? Red carpet option financing for just $325 a month on Explore at your local Ford store today. Courage and tenacity are qualities that drive you to succeed. It's our pleasure to introduce you to this week's Scholar Athlete, a high school student who has excelled not just on the playing field but in the classroom as well. Gene Kobolanski is one of the top wrestlers in Section 5. The Brighton senior was first team all league last year. He and his family moved to Brighton nine years ago from Ukraine, and he's adjusted well. He carries a 3.9 grade average. 10 NBC Scholar Athletes are brought to you by Wendy's and St. John Fisher College. Look, the diamond ring is the same, the reaction's the same, but the price, <laughs> it's not the same. Why pay more at the mall? Take the money you save and also buy her ballroom dancing lessons. Go on a safari or take a nice little vacation. Why pay mall prices when you can save so much on quality diamonds and gold? At the source. Why pay full price when you can save so much at the source? When I wear black, even a little dangerous shows. And my old dandruff shampoo just wasn't cutting it. So I switched to Sell Some Blue Moisturizing Shampoo. Doctor recommended for flakes and itch with aloe and moisturizers for healthier hair and scalp. Never wear black without the blue. Sell Some Blue. Here in Maine, my skin gets really dry, cracked, and itchy. So I'm a Gold Bond Lotion believer. Unlike ordinary moisturizers, Gold Bond Lotion is medicated, so it soothes my skin and stops the itch. Gold Bond. More than a moisturizer, it's medicated to heal dry skin. Value City Furniture. Ridge Road in Greece and near Marketplace Mall in Henrietta. You just can't do any better. Now, here's Mark Gruba with sports on News 10 NBC. Well, the NHL may be uh, short on revenue, but it is not short on talent. The best on display today at the All-Star Game, Atlanta Thrasher Danny Heatley absolutely stole the show in South Florida today. Already had one goal. Here's number two. Right at a midair. That tied the game at two. Second period now. Heatley again. This is his fourth goal of the game. Tying an all-star record held by guys like Gretzky and Lemieux. 4-4 game. Despite Heatley's heroics, the East needed that from Ole Jokinen to force overtime. After a scoreless five, they went to a shootout. Miroslav Shatan, the only saber in the game, misses. Marty Turco with the save. Other way now, Paul Correa for the West. Watch this. A rocket past Laleem. The West wins the shootout and the game. 8-6. Heatley credited with five goals. A new record earning MVP honors. The NFL Pro Bowl, by the way, is underway in Hawaii. Highlights from that on the late news. It is also the AHL All-Star Weekend. The skills competition is tonight in Portland, Maine, with the game set for tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Jason Bottrell is the only Amherst taking part. It's his first All-Star game at any level, and he's earned it, leading the league with 29 goals. I don't think my game's too inducive to an uh, All-Star uh, Dangle Fest, but uh, I'm going to go there and have a fun time and uh, uh, just enjoy uh, meeting some uh, new guys and some of my old acquaintances too. And, uh, uh, like I said before, it's, I'm going to be extremely proud to represent Amherst. Highlights from Bottrell in tonight's skills competition on The Late Show. The Syracuse Orangemen can expect to move up in this week's AP poll after last night's dramatic win over second-ranked Pittsburgh. The biggest crowd in three years at the Carrier Dome certainly played a part. Tied at 65, Jeremy McNeil made the big play following McNamara's miss. That gave him the lead. Pitt would inbound, then call timeout. 
The fans storm the court. The refs give Pitt eight tenths of a second, so they clear the court. Brandon Knight's prayer answered. Again, confused fans spill out of the floor. The refs go to the replay. Knight's shot ruled off well after time expired. Let the celebration begin. Two big free throws and a putback off of McNamara. They were quiet. Everybody was talking about they were old people and couldn't cheer anymore. I mean, it's... Yeah, you know, I mean, that's just nonsense, you know. I mean, if you can't cheer a little bit at a basketball game, you're not old, you're dead. Okay, Jim Beheim on the Syracuse fans. Another big one for the Orange tomorrow. They host Georgetown on Big Monday. A local ball today. Mike Neer in the U of R Yellow Jackets hosting Emory. Pick it up. Tim Sweeney, nice entry to Seth Hobbin. He had 14 points. Jeff Joss, the hot hand from the perimeter. Three ball, side pocket. He had six and nine from three-point land. 22 points, also had eight assists. Other side now, Sweeney for three as a team. The Jackets shot 63% from beyond the arc, 92-74 winners. The women also hosting Emory at the Palestra today. Big day for Erica Smith. Gets the ball, knifes into the lane, two of her 12 right there. Then Ann Gottstein took over down low. Off the miss, Gottstein. A loose ball and she scores later. Little weak side rebounding. Gottstein again. She had 13. The U of R wins 64 63. They are 16 and 1. Got some uh, high school hoops as well today. The Bishop Carney Classic is going on at the War Memorial in the early game today. Great finish between Honeyoy Falls, Lima, and Williamson. Here's HFL's Jamie Singer. Free throw made it 53 50 in the closing seconds. Williamson a timeout to set up the final play. Here it is. John Emily to Jason Denny for three and the tie. It rattles around and falls at the buzzer. We're going to overtime. Extra session, all Cougars. Greg Emerson on the baseline. Nice take off the glass, 55-53. Then they swing it out to Singer for the jumper. He had 23. HFL wins 63-57. Emily, a game-high 27 for Williamson. Also today, Olympia took on Greece rival Athena this afternoon at the War Memorial will start with the Trojans. Their big man, Darkwin Johnson, a strong move off the glass. But the Spartans were game. Nick Mundy through the lane for two of his 20. Then this nice power move. Olympia wins 57 to 54. Carney Kings taking on Batavia. Uh, as we speak, it's tied at 41 in the fourth quarter. The Carney girls will host Elba at 7 tonight. Those highlights on the late news. And the final round of the Bob Hope Classic after four rounds and 17 holes. It still wasn't decided. Jay Haas and Mike Weir all tied at 29 under par heading to the 18th and final hole today. This is Jay Haas and his approach shot. Staring it down, talking to it a little bit. And this is why. Into the drink. Problems. How about Mike Weir? Similar situation. The southpaw does this. And watch where it lands. Imagine this will have some stuff on it. Safely onto the short grass. Weir with a birdie putt. One and done. He wins the Bob Hope at 30 under par. Let's look at sports. All right. What a finish for Syracuse. Yeah. And Great let's see if they can keep it going tomorrow against Georgetown. That's a big one, too. All right. Thanks, Mark. Well, a mild day today, but will the rest of the week bring us some different weather? We'll have a last look with Josh just ahead. The M&T Bank Broadway season welcomes The Music Man to Rochester. Eight shows only February 4th through the 9th. Tickets at Ticket Express and Ticketmaster. Ask about Kids Night on Broadway. This year, local schools and charities raised over $1 million through sales of the One for the Community Entertainment Book. Congratulations, Rochester, for supporting the Entertainment Book.
Amtran Airways has added a third daily nonstop flight between the Greater Rochester International Airport and Baltimore Washington International Airport. As a low fare carrier, Airtran offers Rochester travelers convenient, cost effective air service to many destinations throughout the East and Midwest. Amtrak Mark Trains and Super Shuttle provides frequent and fast door to door service for travelers from the Baltimore Airport to Washington, D.C. Consider flying Airtran, and you'll agree just how easy it is to fly from Rochester to Washington, D.C. Hi, I'm Keith Hernandez. And I'm Walt Clyde Frazier. What a marvelous night for the action. Let's go to the play-by-play. -play. Oh, there's Mr. Graybeard approaching Miss Hottie. Oh, no. Rejected. Clyde, that's got to hurt. Yeah, no play for Mr. Gray. Get that man our just of men brush in color gel. It's specially formulated to penetrate coarse facial hair and gets rid of gray in five easy minutes. Gets rid of strikeouts, too. <laughs> just for men gel. The Rejuvenator. I'm Murray Fitzpatrick from the Rochester Amherst. The one you love is back. The Monterey Ranch Chicken Sandwich at Wendy's. Wendy's, it's better here. If you see news happen, call the News 10 NBC hotline at 232-1010 or star 10 on your Verizon Wireless phone. Join in, a service brought to you by Verizon Wireless. So this warm weather should stick around a little while? Uh, yeah, if you call 35 miles, sure. Yeah, but then we're back into the deep freeze, Kristen. We're going to be talking about uh, a little bit of snow coming in for tomorrow afternoon. And it's going to start out a little bit on the gray side, too. If we see the sun, we'll be fortunate. But look out for a little wintry mix later on. Temps in the mid-30s could hit 40 by Tuesday, but then it's all downhill. Well, come on, that's warm for this type of, this time of year. Break out the shorts, place, why not, right? right? Okay. <laughs> Well, we do thank you for joining us tonight. That is the latest from News 10 NBC. We will keep you updated throughout the night on any new developments in the shuttle tragedy investigation. We do leave you with a live look at the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., where the flag is flying at half-staff in memory of yesterday's tragedy. See you back at 11.